Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. I have a tendency to talk low, so uh, just let me know if you can't hear me. Uh, my name is Sanoon Chia. Um, I, uh, this is my only second time speaking at work camp. First time I spoke. I'm from Atlanta, by the way. I flew in from Atlanta uh, here to Boston. It's my first time here, and it's a great city. I love it. I uh, would love to visit again. Um, it was a great excuse to come over here because of work camp, so I uh, decided to, you know, talk about one of my favorite themes ever. I'm sure everybody here has heard of Dibby. That's why you're in here. Um, anybody have not heard of Dibby theme? Okay, cool. Uh, that's okay. Uh, so, just a little introduction. Um, well, let me tell, uh, tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I am, my name is Sue, again. Um, I have been building sites um, for about 15 years. Uh, professionally, about seven, seven and a half, so I kind of know what I'm doing. I've been doing it for a while. Um, and I also uh, do SEO as well, in addition to web design, uh, something I enjoy very much. And um, I also provide WordPress tutoring, so if anybody needs any help, please let me know. I can also do remote WordPress tutoring as well, so it doesn't have to be in person. Uh, it is one-on-one, -on -one, or I could you know, show your team how to use WordPress. Um, I'd be happy to do that as well. Um, and here is my niece. I have to put her in here. Um, she's my new little niece. She was just born about five months ago. So this, is, this was a couple of months ago, so she's really young. But her name is Isla, and I'm obsessed with her. Because <laughs> I don't have any kids of my own yet, so. Uh, so that's me, and if you are interested in uh, seeing this presentation, I have put it all on the web. Just go to shiftweb.co. It uh, just makes it easy for you. My company name is Shift Web Solutions. And so you go to shiftweb.co. This is just it's a very simple site just for WordCamp. So if you want to follow along and go back to what I was talking about, then you just go here and you can find the sessions here. Okay, so we'll just jump right to it. Um, this... This presentation is about uh, Divi features that you probably didn't know about. Uh, Divi, just to let you know, is one of my favorite themes ever. Um, I've, I've used hundreds of different themes. I've tried all kinds of themes. And once I started getting into Divi, it's, it's pretty much the last theme that I've just used. Um, unless something better comes along, then, then I'll use it. But one of the reasons, or a bunch of reasons why I like using Divi, um, I guess I'm biased. I think it's the best theme in the world. Like I said, I've used many different themes, and this is my favorite. Um, it's also one of the most popular themes. Uh, I'd be surprised if you use WordPress and you've never heard of Divi. Um, it's just very well known. It's uh, created by Elegant Themes, which is a uh, very well known um, developer. has been around for a long time. They, they also sell other themes as well, but Divi is their most popular one, so I think it's their last theme that they, that they, um, that they built. Um, another reason why Divi is awesome because it's a drag and drop uh, visual builder, which is uh, I need to get into a little more because uh, apparently it's the future. That's what a lot of people believe. I mean, that's the direction that Gutenberg is also going into, um, and other themes. You know, you have you have Squarespace and Wix, and I think a lot of them are um, you know catered towards people who prefer visual builders. So that's what Elegant Themes is as well. Is is, is also a visual builder. So if you're more of a visual person and you need to build a site, then Divi Themes is, is pretty fun to use. Um, it uh, has a great user interface. It's super easy to use. Uh, have you, any of you uh, used Visual Composer before? Yeah, I hate it. I, I used to use it. Um, I, it's what I used all the time in the past. But um, So if you're familiar with it, you probably, I don't know, some people like it, but you might get frustrated a lot. It's not, it's not that fun. So I think Divi Builder is much, much better than Visual Composer. And the support is also really awesome um, because there's a huge community um, around the Divi theme. Um, you'll find support anywhere. You just Google something, there's people that made a video on it, or you can contact somebody who just claims to know a lot about Divi. There's a ton of resources, a ton of websites just dedicated just to Divi theme. A lot of tutorials out there. And another thing I like about Divi theme is that when it's a premium theme, um, uh, but you can use it as many times as you'd like. So if you purchase a license for, you know, Divi theme or Elegant themes, you, you can use it for forever. Um, unless you pay, well, there's two, two um, uh, licenses options. There's one that's yearly, that's 89 bucks a year. 
the one-time fee is two forty-nine, which is just that's all you have to ever pay. You don't have to pay yearly, and that's what I recommend. So it may sound like a hefty fee, but just imagine for me, who builds sites for clients, two forty-nine was a small price to pay because I could use it forever with updates forever and never have to pay anything else. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to jump right to it because I only have 40 minutes and I want to be able to have enough time for questions and end. I think a lot of people typically do have questions about Divi, so I'd be happy to answer them. Um, so this is really great for people who have never used Divi theme. Uh, one, of the, one of my favorite things about Divi is that it comes with pre-made layouts. So for example, this site that I made for you right here for WordCamp is just using a Divi layout. I literally just found a layout, click to use it, and then edit it. Um, I did do a lot of editing, but it's, it's just a, it was just a good, easy start. You know, you want to do something that's not, that doesn't need to be fancy. So the pre-made layouts, um, Divi, or Elegant Themes, the developer of Divi theme, uh, comes out with new layouts, like, I think every week now. It's crazy um, how often they come out with the layouts. And if you uh, go to this site and you click on Learn More, you'll see all the different uh, uh, layouts that they have so far. And as you can see, there's pretty much one almost in every industry. Um, I mean, you know, if you're look, if you're a restaurant and you want to find a restaurant uh, layout, you can use this one. But the thing is, you can use any of these layouts for your restaurant. You don't have to limit yourself to just this restaurant layout. So, let's see, how many layouts? I think they have, well, they say that they have 140 layouts. But that also includes, for example, you click on one of them. Um, let's say you, you like this this particular layout, there's uh, multiple pages uh, for, for this particular design. The blog page, case study page, about us, uh, what is this, the home, landing. Um, so it's pretty cool. So if you like this look, then you can use this whole design for your site for free, and it literally takes a second to, um, to upload it to a page. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quick, show you how easy it is. So this is a word my, the WordPress site. I'm going to click Add New. Um, if the internet's slow, maybe I shouldn't. Let's just try it out. No, let's do it. OK, then you choose to use the Divi Builder. Load layout, and here are all the layouts. So let's say, you know, let's use this one if you liked. Um, you want to do a landing page, let's do a home page. Just choose, use this layout. And internet's a little slow, so it's going to take a while to load, but it's because it's loading all the modules for this particular page. Oh, that was fast, that was good. So literally in two seconds, I created this page. And it, it, it uploaded all these modules, these pre-made modules. So let's publish it, and let's see what it looks like. Two seconds, I made this page. It's pretty awesome. So Divi, uh, Elegant Themes is always coming out with new layouts. So that's uh, one of the main reasons why I like Divi. It's pretty cool. It's very, very easy. You need something quick. The second thing is the color palette and the manager. Uh, the color manager is very new, so I added that on here. But um, the color palette's been around for a while. For around for a while. So what what this is, um, if you're familiar with Divi theme, um, this is this is pretty cool. Um, so, for example, in Divi theme, you have all of these modules. Uh, let's say you wanted to make a change for uh, any for for color, for a background color or a text color or whatever it is. Um, in the past, if you wanted to change the color or something, you would just put in a hex code, right? Go to design, text color, and then put in your hex number. But now, um, Divi uh, Divi theme has a color palette here. So this is a color palette that I just set up in the last WordCamp, um, but you can set up a color palette so you can have uh, access to your brand's colors very quickly and easily. It makes it very user-friendly. And uh, to set the color palette, you just go to Divi and Theme Options. And then here's your color palette. So you would just click on one of the colors, set your color, blah, 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 set it and then click save, and then that's how you set your color palette. Now, the, uh, the color manager, this is a new feature that uh, Divi just up, uh, 
made an update on is actually in the Visual Builder. And I don't use the Visual Builder off, often, uh, but I, I need to get into it more because apparently it's, it's going to be... Um, it's, it, a lot of the features that Elegant Themes now comes out with, the new updates for Divi Theme, is in the Visual Builder. So a lot of these updates and capabilities that uh, Divi Theme has, you can't even find it in, in this back end. Um, So here in the back end, this is not the visual builder, this is just, just the normal back end that I'm used to and that I like using more. But then there's the visual builder, you click on to uh, the option to edit with the visual builder, you can actually edit in the front end if you, um, you know, looking at your website and you can see, you can make changes, but it's taking a second to load here. Um, and what, with this new update here, the color manager, is that you can, act, you, uh, Divi now pulls up recent colors that you've, you've used. So if there's a color <coughs> you've used, even if you didn't set it in the color palette that I just showed you, it will pop up. And the reason why this is awesome is because it just makes it so much easier for you to, you know, make changes to your site. So let's say I want to make changes to this yellow part right here. I think that's not it. This is the visual builder area background is yellow. So you click on it. That's the back it's actually nice the background. But let's say it's a color that you get to choose. Uh, you can set it, choose a background color. And these uh, the the most recent colors options are somewhere around here. But if you want if you want to learn more about the color manager, click learn more on the site. Um, and this it tells you about the new update about the color manager. But I'm going to skip through that just because uh, we don't have a lot of time. So move on to the next thing. Another thing that I love about Divi that makes it easy for you to build uh, your, your site is right-click convenience. So if you're in, a, in the admin of uh, your website, and these are all the modules for this particular page right here, right? Um, what I love about Divi is the, the right-click uh, convenience here. You right-click on any of these modules, you right-click it. And then you have all these options to rename this, this module, to do split testing, um, uh, save to library, um, disabling, you can disable uh, this particular module on your cell phone, tablet, or even desktop. You can disable it everywhere, uh, which is really cool. You can lock it for clients. Uh, you can collapse it like that. Let's go back to that. Right click. Uh, you can copy it. You can do all this stuff. And, and I love the... Um, the right-click convenience here it makes it, it makes it very easy. I'm not going to go through every single one of these. Um, a couple of these are actually mentioned in uh, my, my top 10 uh, Debbie feature, features in here, so we'll go through that. But that's just um, uh, something to keep in mind. Um, if you use Divi a lot, you probably didn't even think about doing the right-click, right-clicking the modules. So this is a really, really easy way to manage your site. So here's another thing, uh, number four, module search bar, is only um, available in uh, Visual Builder. So again, this is not Visual Builder, this is the Visual Builder right here. So the module search bar is also really cool. So for example, let's say you wanted to uh, edit this, this, this module right here. Uh, let's click edit, which is this button right here. You see this right here, search options, so let's say uh, it's really handy, you know, going in and trying to find something is, is can be a pain because there's so many options. Um, so you start clicking, start typing text, color, maybe something will come up. No, let's just do this color. Text. I, I guess this is not a text. Let's do this text field. Uh, text. Color. There we go. So if you're in a text... Uh, module, then you'll, if you type a text color, it'll pop right up and you don't have to search for it manually, which is really annoying. Now again, this is only available in the Visual Builder. So, uh, oh, here's the recent colors. Um, uh, that's, this is a really easy way, you know, to find what you need in the Visual Builder. And something probably, if you use Divi Builder a lot, you probably would know that this was there. So, that's uh, another thing that I like. Um, another thing I like about Divi is uh, the gradient backgrounds. 
Uh, this is super cool. I really love this feature. It makes it so easy to, uh, Divi makes it really easy to uh, add a little flair and character into your backgrounds. So I'm going to do that in the back end here. So let's say if you wanted to um, add a background to this background right here, let's right click it. And, or not right click, I'm sorry, just go into the settings. Settings, so here you go, you see that the option is to do a solid color, a gradient background, a picture, or a video. If you go to the, let's go back to this one, this section, where there is a background, uh, is just, it's yellow. So it's a yellow background, but let's do a gradient. You just click to choose, you know, gradient, and then if you, you can play around with it, select a color, Looks really, really cool. Let's see. And then, you, then there's a bunch of settings that doesn't look like it worked. Let me do. There we go. So you could just play around with it. That's another. That's a feature uh, with Divi that I really like. Um, I use that for my site a lot. If you go to shiplovesolutions.com, I use the gradient background a lot. It looks really cool. And I have here on, on the site, just so you guys know, uh, a little how-to on how to how to use the gradient background. But I also have a little more button, so if you need a tutorial, it just makes it easy. So if you like something that you see, just click go to the site and you can learn more about, about each uh, feature. Here's another feature I like, uh, design options for headers. Uh, this one is really cool because you can change... Instead of using CSS to change your header um, um, styling, uh, you don't have to do that. And what I mean by header, for example, let's just go to this right here, text. So that's not a header. Uh, what I mean by header is like H1, H2, like here, H1, uh, H1. I have no idea why. Okay, they're trying to change, they change the color, see Creative Design Agency. Um, but let's say you wanted to change this particular header, you would just go into that module right here, this text module, go into design, and then scroll down and find the header options right here, H1, H2, H3, H4, etc. Um, instead of, you know, setting, you know, CSS, you could just go in here and change the H1 that you have set, and, um, and then you could change pretty much everything the font weight, the style, the color, the size, and everything. And you wouldn't have to do any CSS. So that's something that I really like about as, as someone that builds a lot of sites for clients. I, I like this feature a lot. Another thing that I really like about Divi is up, being able to upload custom fonts. Um, I don't really see the need to do this too much just because there's already hundreds of fonts available. Uh, Divi theme provides pretty much every font from Google Fonts. Um, right in your admin, so if you want to change the text right here, heading font, just click on it, and you can see all the font that's available. But let's say you have a, a particular brand and you have a custom font, you can just upload one right here by just clicking upload, and you can upload a font. So they know you don't need to use uh, any additional plugins or anything like that. You can actually upload uh, custom fonts right here in your admin, which is really cool. But don't go crazy and download every font and you know, because then your, your site will be uploading every font every time, so I would limit your, limit your font usage. Collapse and rename, so here's a, a cool thing I like about Divi is that um, if you work in a module section a lot like me, uh, if you have a certain, if you build a page, they can get really, really long and then you're going to, you know, it's going to be hard to navigate around trying to find uh, where's what. So. Uh, one of the things that I like to do a lot is just renaming um, like one of the, the first part of the, of the module. So for example, Creative Design Agency, this is the first module. You can tell it's the first one anyway because it's up here, but let's say you just like, you wanted to have a visual view of what it's called. I would just click on text and you can rename any of these labels. So we'll just do agency just so you know it's, it's the label. Right here, so you can rename any any one of these right here. Uh, you can also collapse them by just doing a right click again 
and doing collapse. So you have a ton of modules, this just makes it uh, less overwhelming because it, it kind of, you know, reserves a lot more space for other things. Um, but if you want to rename, so let's say you do collapse, you can actually rename uh, this right here, hero, to something else. So you just do, call it, um, top. and then it'll be easy for you to find. So that's a feature about uh, Divi that I really like. Another one that I really like a lot is uh, being able to save to the library. So let's say you create a module here, this module right here. This uh, old yellow and image thing, and you want it on another page. Well, you can save this particular module, this whole thing, or even individual modules, but you can save it by just adding it to a library. So we can save it to a library and we can just call it a uh, favorite header. I don't know. Just something. And then if you create a new page, add new, and if you use Divi Builder, you can uh, upload right here, add from library, add a module that you just saved, that module that you liked. Add to li from library and there it is, favorite header. And then when you do that, delete this one, there's nothing there. And you save it, and it's on a new page. So it makes it super easy for you to not have to create everything over and over again. It gets really boring and tedious to have to uh, create these modules over and over again, but you can save them. You can also save individual uh, modules here, these little gray thingies, and save to library. Um, and you can also even save rows. And, uh, and this whole thing will be a section, not a module. So the blue part is the section, and then these are the rows, and then you have the, the little modules here. So you can save every single one of those. And I think that makes it really easy to, to build sites and other pages if you want to keep a consistency in your design. So you don't have to go back and forth and see what you did. Um, here's the, the last thing that I like about Divi. Did I move too fast? 241. Good. Good, okay. Um, I love this feature because, um, you know, uh, mobile-friendly uh, web design is so important. So you need to be able to make sure that your site looks good on the web. So let's say if you look at this page on, on your phone, it looks great on desktop, right? But let's say Creative Design Agency was way too big on your phone, the text. You can actually change that by, let's click out of this, by just right-clicking any of the modules, right? So let's say, where was that text, that Creative Design Agency? This is right here. So you find that, find that text module that says uh, Creative Design Agency, um, and then right click it, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, I like to right click a lot, but it's not right clicking, it's just clicking the, the module settings. So you click on that, and then if you go to design, and you want to change the text uh, it is H1 header text, right? So you go to design, scroll down, find an H1 text header, and then you can see the text size right here. If you want to change the text size for a mobile view, if you click on this little phone icon, it'll open up the options. For this particular text, heading text size for your tablet and smartphone. This is a super cool feature that, you know, don't forget about. So if, if, if something on your site doesn't look right, um, on your phone, you can edit the, the sizing text uh, on um, in right here in the Divi app. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, Divi theme is a really awesome theme. There's, as you can see, there's so much flexibility. Um, it has so much power. You don't have to be a web developer to build your site if you like to build your own site, and um, you can use Divi and make your site look really good. Um, and it's really easy to use as well. So, does anybody have any questions about how to use the routine or you have a question? How about, about the updates? The updates? What about the updates? Uh, how often, how hard it is? Uh, updates are really easy, they're not hard. So if you, I, I suggest that you use a child theme. So if if you have a, uh, you know, you're using Divi theme, just upload a child theme if you need to make any changes to your uh, CSS code or anything like that, and do any customizations using the child theme. But if you do, uh, updates come uh, actually quite frequently with, with Divi theme, just because it's such a, uh, you know, 
such a uh, well uh, widely used theme that they update it often. Um, I can't say how often they do it, but it is pretty often. Uh, the, the last update was just like last week, I think. It has any feature um, where you can update from there? Does it have the features? Like when you click on the on DV, uh -huh. uh, it has any click, any section where you can update automatically or you have to go download the version. Oh no, no, it's it's just like any other WordPress theme. If you just if you just go to your theme section, it it would just show that there's an update right here. It's just like for any other theme. It would give you a prompt. Right now there's not an update. Um, so it doesn't show you, but if there is, it would just show that an update is needed, and so you would just click update. So then it tell you what version, and then it, it gives you a warning when it's a new version. Yeah, so you know, uh, so right now I'm using Divi 3.10.1, which is the latest version. But Divi, I'm glad you asked this question, because Divi actually just um, launched a new update for updates, right? So, <laughs> and then this new update actually allows you to revert back to the old version of Divi. Um, so if, if there's a an update with Divi theme and, I don't know, something happens to your site, which is can happen, you should always update your website before you do any updates, and something happens, then you can actually click on a button that says revert back to old version, which is uh, a new ver which is yeah, super I cool. I really have a struggle time with other theme. Yeah. Because they're old theme. Yeah, no, with Divi, you Sometimes. just make sure that you put in, go to Divi, right, go to the options, click update, and make sure you put in your, your API key, your username and API. So if you buy Divi theme, um, you have you have to put in the API. So let's say you don't put in this information, there's an update, then you're going to have to manually update it yourself and right. upload it again. But if you just put an API, API then it'll just be when there's an update option, just, it'll, it'll say update now and you can just click it and it'll update. Yeah, very easy. Yes? Hi, I have two quick questions. I don't know if this is on or if you need it. <laughs> but um, so one is, uh, just when you went and set in the module the H1 settings, or yes. any of the settings, is that something you can do in like settings for across all modules? Uh, yes, there is. That's that's a good question. Um, uh, there is. That would be in e either in your um, your your child theme or uh, whatever is set with the layout that that is set up. But if you want some sort of standard, you would just do it in the child theme. Like you would use in CSS. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And then my other question is: Can you talk about, uh, maybe too early, but a little bit about um, compatibility? So, um, uh, so here's the thing. Uh, Elegant Themes have been slightly quiet about about that, um, but they keep reassuring us that everything's gonna be okay. We're gonna take care of you guys. Don't worry about it. When the update comes, don't worry about it. But what I would suggest is right now everybody should just download the plugin Classic, what Classic Editor, just just to to be be sure um, for now. But then when a new, you know, this new Gutenberg, when it comes up, when the new update comes up, um, I, I'm pretty sure, I, I feel confident that, that Elegant Themes is going to uh, create some sort of compatibility with, with it. But they've been a little quiet about it, so I don't, I don't know. Did you say uh, the classic editor, meaning? Um, for you to, to, to be able to um, edit your site just like this, the way it is now. Uh, there's, yeah, a, there's, a plug -in. there's a plug-in that you can use that pretty much disables Gutenberg when the, when the editor I mean, when the update comes. Yeah, See? and that's what I'm going to do for every single one of my sites. I've like, made a plugin that lets you revert to the whole Yeah, Got it. And, and that's what I'm going to have to do for, for, you know, I manage, you know, hundreds of sites, so I have a lot of work ahead of me. What is it called again? That it's plugin? just like the classic editor. Classic editor, okay. Uh, here it goes. Yeah, the classic editor. Um, so if you want to... To make sure that you're going to be safe with, with the new update, I would just download this and tell everything, you know, is okay with the new update. Yes. Um, so I used to be on a bunch of sites, yeah. Oh, yay. Uh, and I've noticed, and other uh, clients might have noticed, that the page speed uh, load is pretty slow. Yeah. And I was just wondering what you do about optimization. Yes. Great question. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say, claim that Divi is, is kind of slow. Um, from my experience, it could be it could go both ways. It could be slow just depending on how you build your site. So if you have a large page with a ton of images and you don't optimize your images, it doesn't matter what theme you use, your site's going to be slow. Um, so make sure that you optimize your images. And then in addition to that, I highly recommend WP Rocket uh, ca uh, caching plugin. 
So I used to use uh, Super Cash, I think it's Total Cash, right? Have you guys heard of that? I hated those plugins, they, they always broke my sights. Uh, once I found WP Rocket, it was one of the best caching plugins I found and it really helped speed up the site. But just make sure you optimize your images. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, the easiest way to do it, just go to, I think it's Image Optimizer. Optimizer. <coughs> or Compressor, I'm sorry. It used to be called Optimizer. Yeah, imagecompressor.com. So you can uh, compress your images, and this does a really good job of just compressing your images without, um, you know, compromising the quality of your um, your your images. So make sure that they're optimized, and then using caching plugin, and just, you know, you know. Here's another thing: when you have when you use Divi and you decide to uh, hide a module, for example, you have a page, and um, you know, you have the option here to disable, right, disable, 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 but you want to keep it, just keep in mind that even though you do this, it's still loading. So that's something that people don't think about as well. So it will slow your site. But Divi theme is pretty, it's a little heavier than, you know, I say like Genesis theme. I mean, of course it is, because Genesis, you, don't, you can't do anything. Um, I mean, I used to use it all the time, but there's not a lot of options. It's a, it's a great theme if you don't really need a lot of customizations. And Divi, I like it just because it's great for clients. It's great for them to, to manage and to make changes if they need to. But it is a little heavier because it's a visual builder. So it's going to be like that for you know a lot of the visual builder themes or plugins out there. Um, so I would just say, you know, use a caching plugin and image optimizer. Yes? Do you suggest as a designer to buy Divi? That's another good question. I would say you just buy it. Okay. If you're a designer, developer, whatever it is you built, if that's your, the service that you provide, buy it. And then um, if you, when you build your site, you just put in your API, right? And it, that's it. Yeah. And then it, you know, it's it's hidden. Nobody can see it. Nobody can use it again. But you build it for them. Just that's part of your service. That's what I would do. I see some people, you know, have their client buy it. But I'm like, that's to me. I like to provide a service. A, a you know, um, a stress-free service for my clients to make it easy for them. They don't have to worry about anything. That's why I also do hosting, but, you know, I don't suggest you provide hosting unless you plan to do it in the long term because it's, it's, it's a lot of work. But I provide hosting. It's great residual income. I love it. Um, but it also allows me to update their site for them. They don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yes? Is there an accordion feature? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so let's say we go to this page really quick. Let's just go to edit another page. Uh, the sample page. And click, uh, let's see, add a module. It's a module. And when you click add module, you'll see all the different options here. And you'll see, yep, accordion is the first one. Yeah. yeah, super easy. So let's say you, you add one, you do, you know, blah, blah, blah. Say and let's say you you uh, you know already set the text, the font, like all the styling for that particular order accordion, and you don't want to do it again. Just close it. Yeah, it's really nice. Yes. Um, I just started using the uh -huh. and built a site with it, and I was trying to find out. I saw in portfolio that you can make a like image carousel, mm -hmm. but I don't want to use that. I don't want to use a portfolio. I would just like to have it's like a slider. I yeah, it's like a carousel slider mm -hmm. that is. I can say how many images that would be on there. Yeah, so it would just be like slide, like but small. But small. Small. Yeah, you like could do that. Across, like five yeah. Across. Um, yeah, so you could do that. Let's say add an insert module. I believe that one is. I think that's the full width. So you want across the page? I want five across. It's actually something you can do in Extra, which is a theme that you add to Divi, okay. from Divi, from Elegant Themes. It doesn't cost more. Okay. But I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. It's Extra, they have like a slider that has a couple of pictures with an arrow at each side. Right. And you can, you can, it's like a carousel scroll. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, so just so you guys know, there's a difference between Divi Theme and Divi Builder. Divi Theme is uh, the actual theme that you use uh, right. to get all these features. Right. Divi Builder can be used on any theme like extra theme. So, um, 
if there's a, a theme that you like and you want to be able to use Divi Builder, you can you can download that theme and then do uh, you know download Divi Builder. Is that thing app you can use within Divi Builder the extra? The way I I use it, I mean, you download Divi and then you download extra as a theme, and it just uses Divi as a child, like extra as a child theme. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah I'm that's, not familiar with that. It's just because I wanted that theme. specific functionality, and I realized extra um, offered it. Okay, yeah. I wasn't aware that uh, extra was also a child theme. I think yeah. that's what it, I think that's how it works. Yeah, I didn't yeah. Know. It's the only one they have. There's, there's multiple ways of how to go about that, so if, if you want to talk after this, and I can give okay. you some more insight. That's what we have. So I have probably a couple more questions. Uh, Time for a couple more questions. Yes. Um, can you talk about transitioning from Visual Composer to Divi? Like what that's like? Yeah. So um, what I would suggest in short to answer that is just to build a whole new site. Is your site big? Uh, not. Uh, just build a new site. It'll be easy. Just build a new site and then, uh, you know, finish it somewhere else. And then when you're ready, launch it. Yeah. I wouldn't try to like you know, do it at the same, in the same, uh, in the same install, you just do it all over again. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Anybody else have questions? Yes? Um, what is it, there's like a Divi theme, or there's like a, um, I think we call it like the Divi, like, plugin, mm -hmm. and there's like an elegant plugin or theme, and I was wondering what the real difference is between the two. Yeah, so, the, um, elegant themes is the, is the developer for all of this, so that out of the way, there's Divi theme. Theme is the actual design that you use, right, for your site, which is in here, you upload a theme. Um, and it's, it's, it's the Divi theme, so it's just a bare bones and it has all the options for, for, for Divi, for, for the Divi builder. Now, let's say you want to use a completely different theme. Like, you go theme forest and you found a theme that you like. Um, I would just be careful because most of the themes on, on theme forest uses uh, Visual Composer. So it'd be kind of crazy if you try to use Visual Composer and Divi Builder. But let's say you find another theme that you want to use, and it's not a Divi theme, you can actually use Divi Builder plugin, which you upload into here as a plugin, to uh, enable your site to be, you know, uh, to, to use a Divi Builder, which gives you all these options that I was just talking about in the session. Yes? When you use the Divi Builder, which I've been using for a couple of years, yeah, and I've created um, several sites, and I love them, and, you know, you have to... The yeah. learning curve, of course, and the tutorials are very helpful. But is that so? I've created my own theme with the Divi Builder. Is that right? No, um, no. You're you're just using Divi Builder. You just created a bunch of layouts. Ah. Yeah. So, uh, what theme do you use? None. You have to use you have to use a use Divi. theme. Divi is your like theme. a default theme. What? Oh, you're just using a default WordPress theme that gets uploaded. I really. No. Yeah, so if you don't know, then you probably use a, a default theme. I would just, I, I, instead of using Divi, because the thing is, you don't want to use Divi Builder and Divi Theme. So if you already have Divi Theme installed, like I showed you here, uh, right here, don't install Divi Builder too. But if you're using some other theme, like WordPress theme, like I didn't, I didn't, I deleted it, it's not showing in here, um, then you uh, would install Divi Builder um, and then you, you, you know, I, if you don't, if you're not sure, I would just use a Divi theme and not use a Divi builder. And not use a div so the, but the Divi builder is the thing that lets you drag and drop. The Divi, the Divi builder comes in the theme. Yes, the Divi builder is built in inside a Divi theme. So as I'm well. using the Divi theme. Period. Yes. Yeah. And it has okay. a Divi build builder. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yes. Okay. But you could use a Divi builder with another theme. Is what you said. Yes. Yeah. Which is a plugin. But you can't always override, like with 2017, you can't override the home page settings easily. Yeah. So you're still I stuck with the that. home page yeah, settings. Sure. So sure. it's very frustrating because there's too much padding, there's all kinds of margins, and it just takes a lot of work. You still got to get that out of it if you want that Divi look. That's why I'm using the Divi theme. Yeah, yes. so the Divi theme is really the only really, way to do it. If you want to use like Divi Builder on another theme, I would just say be careful because yeah. some of the options might not be available. So just, I would just use Divi theme. Yes. I want to correct my question actually. So there's two themes. So there's like a Divi theme and then there's like an extra theme and some of these other ones on Elegant themes. Is there any recommendations about those other ones? Or is yes, that so Elegant themes, Elegant themes makes a ton of themes. 
Uh, they used to, they used to, that's what they did, they developed themes for people to buy. But then when Divi came out, they stopped making other themes. They provide support for their other themes, okay. but you just, you could just use Divi theme. But if you look at their other themes and you like the design of them, just go ahead and use, use those. And then upload Divi Builder. Well, you can also okay. pay $150 for a child theme that needs Divi. Okay. Right? So there's some fancy child themes that are all laid out with beautiful angles and gradients, but you still need to buy Divi as well. Yeah, so I would, right? yeah. So if you if you just Google Divi child themes, I actually, if, if you do that, I, yeah, uh, I actually have, um, if you use a child theme, which is like a design for you, uh, you have to um, uh, buy Divi theme. Um, and if you go to my website, you'll see the op uh, a resource for ch child themes, and you can, you can look there. Um, the volunteers say that I'm done. I can talk to you guys after. If you guys want to.